I'm Mr. Beat. I'm here in the Western world where we do Western things and we have Western values. You know what Western values are, right? Wait, what? Oh, is that why you clicked on this video to watch? Very well then, let's try to define what Western values are. I think I'm gonna go grab my old trusty dictionary. Hey, while I'm doing that, Ellie, can you play that clip I have pulled up on my computer for the audience? Great, she's gonna play, yeah, that one right there. She's gonna play that while I find my dictionary. To assert the superiority of Western values is to state the obvious. It's to have faith in ourselves and it's to have faith in other people. Thank you. That was from a wonderful debate from 2013 hosted by Intelligence Squared in which they spoke about whether or not the West should be reluctant to assert the superiority of Western values. I'll be showing more clips of it later in this video. Just hold on to your butts for that. Now wait a second. I got my dictionary here, but before we define what Western values are, we should probably back up and define first what the West is. West. The direction toward the point of the horizon where the sun sets at the equinoxes on the left hand side of a person facing north or the part of the horizon lying in this direction. Well, that's not terribly helpful at all, is it? Now you may be thinking, Mr. Beat, you should already know what the West is. We all know what the West is, right? After all, I spent at least hundreds of hours studying for overpriced Western civilization classes I took in college. And yet, years later, I still found myself Googling what the West actually was. Is it a reference to the Western Hemisphere? No, not really. It basically is a reference to Europe or any part of the world that has historically been heavily influenced by Europe. For that reason, the West is often expanded to the Americas, Australia, and New Zealand. Now remember, the opposite of West is East, so at one point, there had to be a divide. The divide between West and East we see today has its roots in the cultural and religious divide of the Roman Empire. For example, folks in the Western portion of the Roman Empire often spoke Latin, while folks in the Eastern portion of it often spoke Greek. Later, the divide became more evident when the Western portion no longer was a thing, yet the Eastern Roman Empire, or Byzantine Empire, continued on. And then, in 1055, there was the East-West Schism, aka the Great Schism, which was the first major split of Christianity. After it, there were now two denominations in Christianity, the Catholic Church in the West and the Eastern Orthodox Church in the East. This split combined with the early Muslim conquests that spread Islam throughout Western Asia and Northern Africa made it so that Western Christianity developed a more separate idea identity. Oh, and values, supposedly. When European explorers began to travel the globe to conquer and colonize foreign lands, they brought these values with them, and missionaries followed them, who eventually were successful at converting millions to Christianity, or I should say, Western Christianity. So, where these ideas were not heavily influenced were presumably not, quote, the West. If you've got nine minutes, I strongly recommend my friend Dom's video called What is the West over on his channel, Cogito. He goes into it much deeper than I just did. Okay, so now that we've gone over what the West is, now let's attempt to define Western values. Are they simply the values that people who live in the West have? No, not really. More on why that is in a bit, but know that Western values are rooted in Western civilization itself. Western civilization is the heritage of customs, belief systems, social norms, political systems, economic systems, and technologies of the West. Basically, the values attached to Western civilization are Western values. More than anything, Western values have been most influenced by the big three. 
Greek philosophy, Roman law, and Judeo-Christian culture. But to assume those three influences didn't overlap with other influences outside of the West is silly. For example, there are quite a bit of similarities when it comes to Western and Eastern religions. And here's another thing. When I researched examples of so-called Western values, I began to realize that these are values that uh, most human beings have, whether they live in the West or not. Is there something, is there a set of ideas that Western civilization is predicated on that are more than just bloody opinion? Western values. As we understand them, we know what they are. They are liberal democracy. They are a culture of human rights. They are, and this is very important, freedom of expression. Uh, they are freedom of worship, and they are secular government. Well, the proposition that underlies Western culture is that there's a transcendent morality. Western civilization offers liberating doubt which leads to the methodological principles of scientific skepticism. The individual has intrinsic value in Western societies. Western values, individual liberty, uh, privacy, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Western values, including democracy, the rule of law, and equality between citizens, regardless of their gender, ethnicity, religion, or sexuality. We entered into treaties to codify Western values of freedom and human rights. Western values like we like, at least I like them, uh, free trade, human rights, all that kind of stuff. Um, and what distinguishes the West from all other cultures are the institutions of democracy, capitalism, and science. Religious tolerance, abolition of slavery, universal human rights, the development of the scientific method. By the way, here's a list I compiled of examples of what folks called Western values. Much of these ideas became popular during the Age of Enlightenment, and you, yes, you watching right now, probably value most, if not all of this stuff. I mean, the only ones on the list that might be a bit controversial are probably the capitalism one, or maybe the morality comes from a higher power one. Okay, maybe the free trade one too. Some of these seemingly contradict each other, but overall, even if you don't live in the West, you share many of these same values. And for that reason, the world is overwhelmingly Western. Now, it can be problematic when folks say that those values I just mentioned are exclusively Western values. Take that last video I just played for you. A little later in that video, Ben said, These are accomplishments of a scope and scale that only the West can claim. This is simply not true. We've seen these values in other parts of the world throughout much of human history. For example, hundreds of years before the scientific revolution happened in Europe, science thrived in the Islamic world of the Middle East and Northern Africa. China has valued science more than a thousand years before that. Some historians also argue that ancient China also had a version of capitalism with competitive markets, free trade, and private property. In fact, during the Qin Dynasty, most property in China was privately owned. Again, the West doesn't quote own these values. Another thing that can be problematic is when folks say Western values are far superior to all other values to a point where forcibly spreading them around around the world is okay. The rights which the West has nurtured and brought up, exclusively the West has nurtured and brought up, should be and can be extended to other people. If we do not assert our values, ladies and gentlemen, who will? That's the second clip I've shown you from the extremely influential British author, Douglas Murray. Here's another one. Ironically, no one knows this better than those refugees who truly did assimilate and who defend Western values. Extraordinary people like Somali born Ayan Hersiali, who left the Netherlands because she believed in the principles of the Enlightenment more than the Dutch did. Or Hamid Abdel Samid in Germany, whose life is threatened by fellow immigrants because he defends European values. Murray has made a career out of promoting and celebrating so-called Western values, consistently calling for spreading them around the world. So has this dude, the historian Niall Ferguson. In Ferguson's influential book, Civilization, The West and the Rest, he explains why Western values have dominated the world. Much of his argument centers on the 
the Enlightenment being centered in Europe and the unique circumstances that directly caused the Enlightenment. At the end of the book, which he published in 2011, I should say, he argued that the West had actually lost its edge on the world and that China, along with the rest of the world, would soon be catching up. I gotta say, you may not have heard of them, but Murray and Ferguson have greatly shaped the discourse about so-called Western values over the past 10 years, especially with regards to the Islamic world. Whenever both have talked about the Islamic world, they talk about it as if it is diametrically opposed to Western values. I mean, I do get their points, especially when you look at Sharia law and its effect on how women, the LGBTQ community, and atheists are treated in places like Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia. But then you're ignoring all the reform movements within those countries. For example, some within the Sawa movement in Saudi Arabia have actively called for more rights for women over the past few decades. In another Islamic country, Iran, women have led protests in recent years against laws that require that they must wear hijabs while in public. I don't think Murray and Ferguson mean harm. But often when they talk about the values of the so-called Islamic world, we hear only about the extremists. And you know, pointing to extremists as representative of an entire religion has often been a convenient way to discredit an entire country or culture. Imagine if the world only associated the United States with its extremist groups. Like, don't go to the United States, am I right? All those white nationalists over there. In fact, this oversimplification has caused a modern worldwide culture war between the West and, quote, the rest. In other words, there are now at least tens of millions of people out there who think that their Western values make them better people than those with the non-Western values. It also has arguably led to an increased fear of immigrants. So Europe has had a culture, a distinctive culture, a series of them for like thousands of years. All of a sudden, a ton of people move in who disagree with the tenets of that culture, and they're changing it. Often when we see Western values brought up these days, it's by people afraid we are apparently losing our Western values. All of the successes of America and the Western values that gave birth to America are being eroded as we speak. The results that are finally being revealed represent a litany of assaults on not only traditional Western values, but attacks on fundamental free speech. Western civilization is our birthright. We've got to fight to preserve it, not just with airstrikes, but with a vigorous defense of our common values. Nothing matters more than that. But hold on, I thought NATO was protecting Western values. So although NATO is considered a military alliance, it has the, the added benefit of promoting Western values. Unfortunately, white supremacists have also latched on to so-called Western values as a way to justify their racist beliefs. Specifically, they often bring up Western values when promoting the white genocide conspiracy theory, which revolves around the beliefs that powerful people are trying to prevent, quote, white, white people, people, whatever that means, from having kids so that the world becomes, I don't know, less white or something? Remember, race is a social construct. It has no genetic basis and was a term invented by one group of people to justify that it was superior to another group of people. I think that white identity and white nationalism is a little misleading. I think it's more accurate to say that the alt-right cares about Western supremacy rather than white supremacy. It cares about Western values. It cares about liberal, capitalist, Western democracy, democratic values, freedom, equality, quality, that kind of thing. And it sees, you know, various threats to those on various fronts. Uh, yeah. Anyway, in conclusion, most folks who speak about Western values mean well. However, sadly, it has also become coded language for something more sinister that leads to xenophobia and racism. Perhaps continuing to label stuff in society that we like, quote, Western values, is damaging public discourse and oversimplifying society. Back to that Intelligence Squared debate I mentioned at the beginning of the video and that I've been showing clips from throughout. After watching, I found myself agreeing with the journalist Charles Glass. Now, in this discussion tonight, no one on our side is going to say that Eastern or Southern or whatever is a non-Western value is superior. We're merely calling upon you to think carefully what you mean when you say that you, your values or your race or your culture is superior to all others, not just Islam, but to all others in the world. 
we know what that leads to. Here's another video I came across from 2013 where this woman from Jordan calls out Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google, after he talks about spreading Western values around the world. Earlier on in your presentation, you spoke about Western values and bringing Western values to the rest of the world. And I don't want to come across as the chippy foreigner, but please can you move beyond that language and recognize that they're not exclusively Western values. You know, respecting human, human life and the rule of law, these are also Muslim values. These are, these are values that go across the world. And as an international cooperation with such a global reach, I would really appreciate it if you would lead the way by Good. moving beyond I'll, I'll that have, terminology. I agree with Thank that. You. I agree with that. I believe that calling values Western does more harm than good. No one has to own values and geotagging them is counterproductive. It can lead to nationalism and xenophobia. Here's a video where I present how nationalism can be problematic, by the way. Basically, we all love most of these things. Let's just stop being lazy with our language and making it us versus them. Let's just call them Values. But what do you think? Is using the phrase Western values actually not that big of a deal? What is your favorite Western value? What's your favorite Eastern value? What's your favorite Southern value? And finally, what's your favorite Northwestern value? Let me know in the comments below. Also, what do you value? Do you value me? I hope you do, I value you. Comment me, brah. Thank you for watching.